I remember when every YouTube video started with some opening drone shot. Usually the drone would start off by the creator and then go super high and then fly over some trees bursting with fall colors or speeding across a body of water towards some distant landmark. Even though drones aren't quite as popular with YouTube creators as they once were, their commercial possibilities have soared. Get it? This is the DJI Mavic 3 Classic, a slightly scaled back version of the Mavic 3 with a matching slightly scaled down price. It's designed for the drone pilot doing commercial or recreational video work who doesn't need to produce cinema quality footage. I spent weeks flying the Mavic 3 Classic. I'm going to show you what it can do and what it can't do compared to the Mavic 3 and the Mavic 3 Sydney. And I'll also show you if you should get this or something else. Let's give it a try. The Mavic 3 Classic is the newest member of DJI's drone line, and it falls just below the Mavic 3, which falls just below the Mavic 3 Cine. It's a shame that drones have dropped in popularity because sophisticated drone cameras in these systems are so much better than they were in the first few generation of consumer or even commercial drones. While the Mavic 3 is not the smallest drone in the company's lineup, it's easy to fit into a camera bag or a backpack, and the footage it creates blows away older drones. With the Mavic 3 Classic, you can capture the same 5.1K video and 12-bit RAW images as the Mavic 3. There's the same 49-minute claim flight time, the same advanced obstacle avoidance in this, the same cruise control, and the same top-of-the-line transmission system to communicate between the drone and the controller. The Mavic 3 line also has this crazy night mode, which lets you capture footage in incredibly low light and this feature alone rekindled my love of drones. I'm going to buy a drone just because of this. I was blown away by this footage. There are only a few areas where the Mavic 3 Classic doesn't match up to the original Mavic 3, but they might not be important to you. I used to fly the DJI Inspire 2, which was a pro-level drone with a $3,200 starting price and a top-end price of about $10,000. If you gave me the choice right now of the Inspire 2 or the Mavic 3 Classic, I'd probably end up picking the Mavic 3 Classic. From a spec standpoint, the $1,500 Mavic 3 Classic beats the Inspire in some categories, especially at the lower end of the range, and the Mavic 3 lineup comes really close in many other specs. For example, the top speed of the Mavic 3 line is 47 miles an hour and the Inspire 2 is 50 miles an hour. The flight time on the Inspire 2 is 55 minutes and the Mavic 3 is 46 minutes. Hey, can I help you? No, really. Are you looking for help deciding what camera gear to buy or how to use the gear that you already own or maybe how to improve your photography skills? To help you learn how, I've launched Dave Tries This With You. Go to withyou.how and set up a one-on-one -on -one personalized video meeting designed to help you get the most out of your gear, improve your technique, and improve your whole photography life. I've spent more than 20 years covering photo and tech gear. I've been the editor of multiple photography magazines and I've been a working photographer for more than 25 years. I want to use that experience to help you master photography. I guarantee you'll like the conversation and if you don't, you get your money back, so there's no risk. Let me show you how together today. Both the Mavic 3 and the Mavic 3 Classic have a 20 megapixel 4 thirds CMOS sensor with a claimed 12.8 stops of dynamic range and an adjustable aperture from f2.8 to f11. Both drones have a 24 millimeter equivalent focal length lens, but the original Mavic 3 has an optical telephoto lens as well. That's the biggest difference between the Mavic 3 Classic and the Mavic 3, and for the majority of the users, you won't even notice. Having a telephoto lens is great in a drone, especially in a world where flight restricted areas exist, but sacrificing the telephoto camera to save $500 seems like a great deal. To make the Mavic 3 Classic seem like an even sweeter deal, the telephoto camera on the Mavic 3 had only a resolution of 4000 by 3000 pixels, while the wider angle lens on both of these systems is 5280 by 3956. That means that you can crop in a bit on the Mavic 3 Classic's wide angle footage, especially with the 5.1K capture, and still have greater resolution than the Mavic 3 telephoto lens without a crop. DJI talks about the 28 times digital zoom on the telephoto lens on the Mavic 3, but digital zooms don't really mean anything. Don't go by digital zooms. You can digitally zoom in an image in Photoshop. That doesn't make it a feature. The Mavic 3 and the Mavic 3 Classic capture 10-bit 5.1K 50 and 4K 60 and can record in both H.264 and H.265. There's also a Mavic 3 Cine model which can record in Apple ProRes 422HQ, and if you don't know what I just said, that model isn't for you. The Cine model also comes with one terabyte of internal storage versus the 8 gigabytes of internal storage in the Mavic 3 and the Mavic 3 Classic. All the Mavic models have a micro SD card slot anyhow, and if you're not shooting ProRes, there's no need for a terabyte of storage. The variable aperture in the camera really helps. As the sun was setting, I was able to open up the aperture and get several more stops of light than I would with a fixed aperture in a more traditional drone. 
The variable aperture is also great because most drones don't have it. While variable aperture might not seem important at altitude shooting, when you're using the drone for footage of something like a wedding or a building, being able to control the depth of field is really great. I normally fly a DJI Mini 3 Pro, which is small enough for me to fit in a jacket pocket, but the footage is not nearly as good as the Mavic 3 Classic. I'd happily carry around the slight extra bulk of the Mavic 3 Classic to get better image quality. As a stills camera, I found the quality of the photos better than I anticipated. I've been flying smaller Mavic drones for years, and while I love the quality of the video that comes from those drones, the camera footage usually isn't very good. Now let's talk about night mode. Night mode on the Mavic 3 Classic is insane. Usually when the sun comes down, so does my drone. But with this drone, I often started shooting after dark. Night flying with a drone has some limitations, so please check in with the FAA guidance on night flying, and please don't fly over populated areas. Even this footage shot over the river at low altitude is mind-blowing. I thought it was cool taking night mode photos on my iPhone, but video from a flying drone is a whole nother level. One of the main reasons people like big drones like the Inspire is how they handle when flying in windy conditions. Tiny drones don't have the mass to resist the wind, and their motors don't have the power needed to push back against a strong gust. The Mavic 3 Classic only gave me a high wind warning once, and that was when flying over the river when the wind was gusting upwards of 20 miles an hour. I dropped the altitude on the drone a little bit and I continue to fly without any more warnings. I don't even consider bringing my smaller drones out to fly on windy days, but the Mavic 3 Classic handles the wind like a champ. Flight time was spectacular. I'm used to getting 20 minutes of flight time per battery, and while I didn't get the full 49 minutes of the specs, I did get within a few minutes of it. My longest flight was 39 minutes, though it could have been longer if the remote hadn't kept warning me that I was almost out of battery power. Yes, remote, I know my battery is low. My drone is right Right there, two feet over the ground. I tested the Mavic 3 Classic with the Fly More kit, and I had a total of three batteries with me. I went out to test the drone one day, and I realized I hadn't plugged in the charger to the outlet overnight, and two of my batteries were dead. The third one was showing it wasn't quite full. With other drones I've used, I'd had to have headed home after a few minutes of flying when the battery ran out or just given up on the day entirely. But even with a partially charged battery on the Mavic 3 Classic, I got more than a half an hour of flight time and then I ran out of subjects before I ran out of juice. One of the cost savings approaches DJI took with the Mavic 3 Classic is to offer it with or without a remote. A lot of pilots are on their second, third, or fourth drone and these drones often come with controllers. I tested the Mavic 3 with the DJI RC remote and it's such a better flying experience than using one of the remote modes that uses your smartphone. There's no losing contact with the drone when your cable comes out of your phone, no accidentally dropping your phone on the ground when fumbling with the controller. I've done that way too many times. This controller also uses the company's O3 Plus transmission system, which is also found in the drone, and it gives super long-range communication with the drone. If you're going to fly a DJI drone, I really recommend spending the money on this controller. Links for this are in the description below. Being able to fly far and fast and high isn't a lot of good if you fly straight into something. Years ago, DJI sent me a Mini to test, and I had it outside of my property showing it to my son and his friend. The friend asked if he could fly it, and when I handed him the controllers, he flew the Mini up, flew it a few feet back, straight into a tree, and it plummeted to my driveway, where it shattered into pieces. See, the Mini had no backwards-facing obstacle avoidance system, so it didn't know to stop before hitting the tree. Just like the Mavic 3, the Mavic 3 Classic has the full complement of sensors. You don't give up anything there. This gives the drone the ability to keep from slamming into an object. As with other DJI drones, the Mavic 3 Classic can fly pre-designed patterns that they call quick shots. These quick shots look just like those used on TV and cinema, where a camera flies elliptically around a character, or zooms suddenly away from someone. You know, like that shot in The Force Awakens where Rey is handing Luke the lightsaber and the camera just flies around for a couple minutes. It's that. But I find I never have quite enough room to pull off these quick shots. I live in an area with a lot of trees, and so to get a quick shot working right, I have to go to the middle of a football field, which really isn't very cinematic. There's no long sweeping vistas over a black sand beach coming from where my drone flies. This is a sample of what DJI calls master shots from their own DJI Air 2S product page. Notice that the footage is being captured on an ice sheet in the middle of nothing. That's so that they can get it working without running into something. Another great feature in this drone is cruise control. This mode keeps the drone flying on course at the speed it was flying when the cruise control was engaged. This allows the pilot to concentrate on capturing video, and I think it makes for really smooth flights and great looking video. It's essentially like programming a course for the drone to follow, but without needing to use the map. I do think that the drone should do something like the Tesla does when you put it into autopilot, where you have to put your hands on the control. The Mavic 3 Classic is one of the most enjoyable drones that I've ever flown, as well as one of the most powerful. It's easy to fly, it's easy to take great footage, and it's easy to carry anywhere you go.
Obviously, if you're a professional that needs an optical telephoto lens, this isn't the right drone for you, but then you're probably not watching this video either. If you're shooting for weddings or real estate or TV or even some cinema, this is a perfect drone, at least until the next great drone comes out. Let me know in the comments what drone you have and which you'd buy if you're shopping for today. Links to the DJI drones are also below. And if you're new to the channel and you like the video, please hit the subscribe button below. And it's really great to have you as part of the family. For Dave Tries This, I'm David Schloss. Thanks for giving this a try. Also, go ahead and click through on my playlist of all of my hands-on camera reviews where I give you my honest opinions on lots of new cameras.